Well, you're still YouTube, I'm still Gavin Winnett, and I'm still bad at making YouTube videos. Which, given my career, is somewhat hard to explain. Um, but I actually want to make a video today. I would like to talk to you fine folks about something that I don't really see mentioned, at least in the filmmaking side of YouTube, and that is the concept of using modular uh, stackable toolboxes, um, specifically today, the Milwaukee Packout system, for, um, for filmmaking, different filmmaking applications. Um, the way I use them on set in my day-to-day -day career as a director of photography and camera operator, and um, just kind of how my use has evolved over the years. So yeah, I'm attempting to make a YouTube video shooting on my iPhone because I thought that would be fun and I spent too much money on filters and bits and pieces for the iPhone. I'm running an iPhone 14 Pro Max off of a V-mount battery and into a uh, wireless monitor with a frickin' mist filter on it, so it could all look absolutely terrible, but hypothetically everything's gonna be shot on the iPhone. My uh, The B-roll, my talking heads, which are gonna take forever because I can't talk to save my life. Um, yeah, so I guess, I guess we're in this. See, told you. So I originally bought a set of the Rigid brand, um, like stackable toolboxes. Um, they were the first ones that I believe that I saw on the market at the time. Uh, this was 2015, I believe. And it was great. It was a good, it was a good start. I didn't realize how in the sauce I'd end up getting with the whole concept, but um, just started off throwing my lighting, the little bit of lighting that I had, and uh, grip gear. You know, a couple of spring clamps, some extension cords. That was kind of it. I had maybe one crappy LED panel. Um, and this is while I was in college and also starting my career. Um, so it was very janky early on. And so two or three years after that is when I happened to wander into Ye Olde Home Depot uh, one Black Friday of yesteryear and bought what was the beginning of my pack out stack um the classic just like with the rigid boxes uh you know large rolling toolbox medium small i just thought they were uh pretty cool they seemed a lot beefier i liked the way they uh you know connected together a bit more than the rigid boxes it just seemed like a bit more solid and beefy of a system um which it is it was definitely an upgrade at the time it was also nice to have you know two sets of boxes now because, uh, you know, I was starting to move along in my career as a camera assistant and also doing random, you know, grip work, lighting work, all sorts of random commercial stuff, um, all the random, very low budget janky jobs you find yourself on uh, in the South Florida film industry. And so that's, you know, how it started to evolve. I still had to keep it very minimal uh, just because I all I had was a poor little red Ford Focus that everything had to fit into and also anytime I was doing work uh, you know second AC work first AC work um, anything where I wasn't providing any gear it would just sit at home until a little while after I moved out here to Los Angeles um, they came out with a set of drawers which was a big game changer and it happened to come out right at the same time where um, shortly after I moved to LA my career aggressively shifted um, I was solely into my camera operator director of photography career um, it ha which it happened surprisingly fast I'm very fortunate to where I've ended up within the last three years almost four years now if 2020 counts and so I think at this point you know I can keep blabbing but I might as well actually get into the setup I need some fill yeah that's that's professional am I in the frame 
Yeah, hopefully this is vaguely in focus. This is the wide-angle lens now. Uh, so I'm sure that's a, a look. Um, so this is my original packout stack. The uh, rigid toolboxes um, have moved on to a new life. But um, this is the original stack. It's out of order at the moment, but you have large, medium, and small toolboxes. And at the moment, uh, this is kind of the less used sections um, of the entire setup here. Um, in the large case, we have some, I think they're like 10 aught um, stingers, very, very heavy stingers uh, that came with some Airy 1.2K HMIs I used to own. Um, they're like, 75 80 feet long and I think there's at least two of them in there um, so they're only really used these days if I'm doing really long cable runs uh, night exteriors that kind of thing and there's also a hundred foot stinger like you know a slightly less heavy duty for the same reason where it's you know it's kind of unwieldy and not really useful outside of doing very long cable runs and then I think there's also some old 1k dimmers, um, just hand squeezer dimmers, just in case uh, I haven't used them. I don't think I've used them once since I've moved out here, but they are still in there. Um, there's nothing in the medium one right now, because uh, we've actually been using it uh, when we've been going camping, my girlfriend and I, um, just to throw random stuff, cookware, whatever, into. Um, so it's just kind of empty. I think it's going to shift into a uh, new setup strictly for camping um we'll just have to see and then the little guy has um all of my car rigging accessories suction cups little mounts this that and the other um just anything i use when i'm doing smaller car rig setups or to add on to a, a rental package of some uh you know a full-on uh car mount setup um and so it doesn't get used very often fun when it does, but for now it just hangs out in here. And then we move up. So this is an addition from this year. Um, this is the Packout Cabinet, which is a wonderful new thing. Um, as you can see, my first thought when I saw that they were coming out with it was, oh, that's going to be Stinger City. Um, up to that point, Stingers still lived in either the bottom large roller crate or I would throw a couple into the middle one to go with this setup or throw them into a, you know, just grab one or two, throw them into one of the milk crates. But, you know, they never had a true home until the cabinet. And as you can see, you know, a rainbow of colors. You can see exactly which one you're looking for. They're all nice and uh, Velcroed together. And so you just grab one out and then when you're done, roll it back up, throw it back in and uh, you're good to go on to the next day and you know, nice and secure and the most important thing and this goes with this and the drawers as to why this setup is you know as great as it is in my opinion is that you don't have to unstack anything anymore to get to what you need to get to um, originally you know, working out of just the basic toolbox stack, you show up to set, everything's gotta be taken apart, laid out on the floor, opened up, it's not quick to move around. Um, whereas the drawers and the cabinet and, you know, these newer uh, newer pieces of the kit, um, it just allows it, you know, you're working out of it. You're not having to disassemble it to get to things. Um, it's great. And this is a perfect example of why the drawers were such an important, you know, revelation to the system. So let's jump into those. Okay, so now we're really into the core of the system. Um, we have a four-wheeled rolling dolly platform, and we get into the first set of drawers. So very bottom, this is kind of grip world. We have Mafers, Cardellinis, some Gobo heads. Um, Nice little smorgasbord, throw it in there. As long as it closes, you're good to go. And there's definitely a little bit more room uh, for throwing some more stuff in there. 
but then we have baby pin world which is a little bit empty right now um, but we have baby pin extensions pigeon plates offsets um, I never remember what this one's called but uh, it's kind of a door frame wedge kind of deal um, weird arm uh, like multi articulated arm and uh, good old butt plug junior to baby receiver uh, junior to baby pin adapter very important and then in the very top here we have odds and ends world um, grip clips and spring clamps drop ceiling scissor clamps um, safety chain random cordage and some C clamps hidden under there some scraps of duvetine and black wrap usually there's a box of black wrap in here but it's the end of the year I'm running low a wrench and a level because you know expect the unexpected that was unexpected okay we've now found our way into the camera department conveniently when I bought the first uh, double drawer I discovered that it is the perfect size for the core Neo mini gold mount batteries it is literally perfect height monitor batteries two different sizes of Sony NPF batteries which is uh, at this point the only two kinds of batteries I own actually are gold mounts because V mounts are um, an abomination and NPF batteries and so in the middle here I also have a four bank NPF charger and under that is a two bank gold mount charger I got a little bit of electric going on in here with some cube taps, triple taps, uh, a weird socket adapter because why not. We got some gaff tape and uh, yeah, this is a little bit modular, it, you know, batteries just kind of get thrown in here at random. Normally at the start of a job I'll just have all of the fresh monitor batteries uh, off to this side and throughout the day, unless we're charging, you know, dead ones will just get thrown in here that way. When I come back at the end of a day, I'm like, okay, I know what needs to be charged. Yeah, so from there, we move up one drawer to kind of camera miscellaneous, uh, AKS, where a lot of random cables that have just been piled in here from uh, the last job I did where we tore down cameras, shoved everything in here, and I haven't touched any of it since the beginning of December. And it's like two days till New Year's now, so. I'm on vacation. I don't have to organize my power cables. A couple Noga arms. There's also a big boy, uh, very beefy Noga arm hiding down in there. Um, SD cards for my C70, card reader, bongo ties, just a little bit of randomness uh, going on in there. Which, speaking of the C70, that's another big change in the past two years that hopefully moving into three years since I made that. Uh, YouTube video about the Zeiss Yenna lenses, but uh, that's a topic for another video. As much as I've been wanting to make a video of talking about it, ain't gonna be this one. Um, Airy pouch, which is you know, used to be my AC pouch, but now it's just markers and tools. Um, and then we got a little REI pouch full of uh, different monitor mounts, and um, this is a bunch of other miscellaneous uh, AKS junk so yeah so that's the beginning of camera world now we just got to go one more floor up okay so now we're to uh, the top floor of drawers um, also very important Robocup sound world which is where we have um, very simple I know where everything is it's really hard to fuck up sound kit for when I am doing work, especially the work, a lot of the work I do with um, ABC slash Disney. Um, I'm the director of photography, but I'm also running my own sound, running a camera. You know, it's very make it happen uh, kind of work. So I have a set of two uh, sets of the Rode um, wireless go twos I believe that's what they're called with the deity s mic or honestly I don't even know the names but they're the deity very very uh, tiny uh, lav mics um, which sound great they're super super small 
So that's split up into two bags. This is the main bag. Uh, down here is extra cables and extra, um, you know, tapes and uh, different little mic hiding doodads, etc. But that's the wireless side. Then this side, got a Rode NTG4 hiding in there. Right now it's on a camera mount, but I also have a boom pole off that way. Um, this is, it says video but it's in the audio case and this just has um, a USB uh, like distribution little bank that uh, lets me charge all my mics at the same time wind fuzzy some uh, rechargeable double A's and triple A's in there and a charger and that's it that sounds that's as much as I want to talk about it I'm using <laughs> incidentally this is uh, a Dehascam DR40 that is ancient like I bought this before I even bought my Panasonic GH4, which my, was my first uh, any kind of a real camera. Um, and so there's definitely some janky pictures of this built into uh, a classic mid-2000s DSLR rig. And so then from sound world, we move up into camera operator survival world. So this is, aside from the main camera AKS, that's the main AKS for a ca like my camera package, if I'm providing a camera package or if I'm providing a majority of the camera equipment, that's the main batteries in AKS. This is, I'm showing up as a camera operator or as a DP, but I'm not bringing any of my own uh, like camera setups. What do I need to survive? I need gloves if it gets cold. I need a beanie in case it gets cold. I need a shoulder pad to be nice and comfortable. Uh, I have uh, some custom hand grips I've cobbled together from uh, different parts I've collected over the years um, in case I don't like the hand grips for whatever camera I'm thrown. There's also a little four bank power distribution box down here that's uh, just in here because it doesn't fit anywhere else. Cap it in case it rains, snacks in case uh, there's no crafty and gum in case I have to get nice and close to talent also good uh, for sound world um, and then there's some other like p-tap cables in here and this is a, uh, a gold mount plate that I cobbled together to hook up to um, any camera that can run off of a 4-pin XLR um, this came off of an old Ikigami uh, beta like standard definition news camera from the 80s but um, I cobbled that together um, especially for use with uh, Canon C300 Mark III's and C500 Mark II's um, if they don't have a gold mount plate with them I can provide just above that is um, another small box uh, this one with a nice clear lid which feels fancier hiding in here is all my little practical lights uh, so I think it's two Aperture MC's, an MC Pro, an MT Pro, uh, two more of the B7C bulbs um, to go along with my 8-bulb kit, or if I don't want to bring my 8-bulb kit, I know there's two in here with some socket mounts, uh, chargers for all that, and a little bit of like mounting hardware that's specific to the little lights, um, always good to have. So I feel like there's not much to say about the milk crate uh, section of the packout kit. They're big, open, empty crates like milk crates that you know you can throw whatever you want to in them. But they're mainly for um, trash that producers and clients and uh, random strangers that happen to be passing by uh, choose to throw into it and grace your presence with their uh, trash. Here's a really low effort wide angle shot. Hopefully it looks amazing. Um, very quickly want to say this uh, kind of ammo can style uh, box is kind of an odd man out. Um, really I need two to be able to actually use them in a stack. But uh, right now all that's in it is some tennis balls for if I'm actually shooting on a, you know, a location like a nice house or you know something bougie where we actually want to protect the floors. This is full of tennis balls. Um, the next section of this, uh, I want to show you how I work with this out of my truck. Um, one of the great things about this system and why I like it so much is similar to the base of the uh, four-wheel dolly down here, um, you can buy these plates that are just the mounting system. Um, 
so you can literally mount these boxes to anything you want. Um, I've seen some great things on the uh, production vehicles uh, Facebook group of people, you know, uh, building custom carts that are just pack out carts and such. Um, that's really the only place I've seen people talk about using these at all. Um, but I decided to mount some uh, two of those plates into the bed of my pickup truck. Uh, the moment I got the truck, like oh, a couple days after I bought the truck, came out with the drill uh, and went to town. Um, but I have some footage of you know how it goes into the truck. Originally, when I originally wanted to make this video half a year ago, um, it was coinciding with me going to Death Valley to work on an episode of a paranormal show that uh, I'm a camera operator on. Um, but they were also, the production was also renting some of my personal gear uh, since I wanted to drive out there anyways instead of flying because uh, I love Death Valley and also I wanted it to be a good test of my truck off-roading and so I went out there thinking oh I'm gonna film how I use the pack out stuff on set this that and the other and then proceeded to get out there uh, do some fun off-roading on our day off and aside from that not actually shoot any behind the scenes of me using the pack out stuff so uh, here's that To try to sum this all up, it's the modularity. That is what I'm really trying to hone in on why it makes my workflow so efficient on set. Um, aside from everything being, you know, having a place and being in its place, um, what's also great about it is it's scalable. If I know I'm only going to be um, doing cam work, I only bring, you know, kind of the camera boxes. Um, if I know I'm just doing lighting for something, all I do is bring what I would need for that. Um, but it's still all in one succinct package if I need the full Monty. Um, so yeah, I hope this was vaguely interesting. Also, this shot looks fake. This looks green screen. I don't know why this the, the telephoto iPhone lens is uh, not doing anybody any favors um there's a word where i reshoot this um i just thought this would be interesting to talk about i've had it on my mind for a long time um as i've grown with the pack out system um i just uh yeah i'm trying to think of things that i want to see other people talk about and if no one else has, I guess I'll just try to talk about them myself. Um, again, a lot has changed in the past couple of years uh, as far as things I own, the kind of work I do. So hopefully moving into the new year, 2024, I would like to actually make some more content. Um, we'll just, we'll see how it goes. I make no promises. 
and hopefully if I do make something it'll be lit better than this. I have so many light bulbs pointed at me. It's just a bunch of light bulbs. No filmmaking lights, no F21, F22, flex panels, no 600Ds, 300Ds. It's just a bunch of light bulbs. This is anarchy. Happy New Year.